Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. In this video, I am going to discuss the wave mechanical treatment of valence bond theory. This valence bond theory is also represented or abbreviated as VBT. In this video, we are going to discuss the wave mechanical treatment of valence bond theory in context with the exchange of electrons, screening effect of electrons, ionic character of the hydrogen bond. In addition to that, we are also going to discuss the origin of electron pairs in valence bond theory. Now you may have a question here, why these wave mechanical treatment of valence bond theory we are going to discuss here. So the reason behind this is that in the bonding theory, we are having two major theories, VBT and MOD. To explain many of my concepts, right now I stepped on this molecular orbital theory and its linear combination of atomic orbitals just to explain few concepts in the UV visible spectroscopy and in the molecular orbital term symbols. I thought I should explain linear combination of atomic orbitals in molecular orbital theory. Therefore, I thought before making the videos on these topics, I should start with the origin that is valence bond theory which we are going to understand here in a very simple and easy manner and that will help us to understand the molecular orbital theory and this molecular orbital theory is all around while we are discussing the sigma pi bonds etc in the complexes and many more things so therefore this video is very very important to understand this concept so let's start with the video so this valence bond theory grew directly out of the idea of electron pairing by Lewis and others. So here I have shown a hydrogen molecule and its Lewis structure. In the Lewis structure, the electrons are shown by these dots. So these dots paired up and they form a molecule from two hydrogen atoms. In 1927, W. Hitler and F. London proposed a quantum mechanical treatment of hydrogen molecule which is known as valence bond approach. And this valence bond approach was further developed extensively by Linus Pauling and J.C. Slater, which we are going to adapt here for the discussion is Pauling and Coulson's. The reference will be given in the description box. Suppose two hydrogen atoms that are at sufficient distance so that they do not have any interaction with each other. This can also be shown in this pictorial form this is hydrogen a and this is hydrogen which is designated as hydrogen b so this is only designations just for the distinction these do nothing with the hydrogen atoms and the wave functions for these hydrogen atoms will be represented by the psi a and psi b if these are the hydrogen atoms and they are far apart so in that case the system of two atoms which are not interacting with each other. What will be the wave function for this system? So the wave function for this system, which is having two electrons, which are also designated again as electron number one and electron number two. The electron associated with hydrogen atom A is designated as electron number one and the electron associated with hydrogen atom B is designated as electron number two. And the wave function for this system, which is having two isolated hydrogen atoms, which are not interacting with each other and they are far apart. Total wave function for this system is psi is equal to psi A1, psi B2. And this is the overall wave function. This is wave function for hydrogen atom A, which is having electron 1. And this is wave function for hydrogen atom B, which is having electron number 2. If we consider that we bring these two hydrogen atoms together to form a molecule then their individual wave functions will change so here i am going to show you small animation say they overlap with each other in that case their individual wave functions here psi a and psi b they will change and that will be represented by this this is what we considered when they are not interacting but this is the starting point for us when they are overlapping, what kind of result this kind of equation will give us. So here, if we draw a plot, energy versus internuclear distance. So why internuclear distance? Because when they are coming close and they form bond, 
like hydrogen atom the distance of this hydrogen atom a bond distance is equal to 74 picometers so that is why we are going to consider the internuclear distance and energy if we consider this total wave function then the graph between energy and internuclear distance is like this and the value for this is minus 24 kilojoule per mole here i probably mark the values so this is the actual energy value for the hydrogen molecule and this is the distance bond distance for the hydrogen molecule hh bond 74 picometers and if this will be the total wave function then we are getting this kind of graph and according to this graph we are having these values that is minus 24 kilojoule per mole is the energy and 90 picometer is the bond distance which are far away from the experimentally observed bond energy therefore making some approximations to get the values near or approximately to the experimental bond energy values and bond distance values. So what kind of approximations just to get the values which are near to the experimental values. So the first one is if we see that these two atoms overlap. So this is the small animation say these two atoms overlap with each other and the situation of overlapping we generally represent like this. If SS orbital overlaps, then this is the internuclear axis and this kind of situation we are having. Now, these electrons are present over here. We cannot say at this moment because these two are indistinguishable. So, we cannot say that with the atom A and atom B, electron number 1 and electron number 2 are there. The situation can also be reversed. With A, we can have electron number 2 and with B, electron number 1. So, in that case, we are just removing the artificial restriction over there. What is that? Psi A can have electron number 2 and Psi B can also have electron number 1. If this is the case and do, two possibilities are there, then the total wave function will be changed from this to this. So, what is this? Psi A1, this is as it is, and Psi B2, but the case may also be possible, Psi A2 and Psi B1. I hope you understand this point. Now, if we again draw the energy diagram, energy versus internuclear distance, then we get, now if I draw in this case, then we get a graph like this. This is say E A and this is say B. In this case, we get the energy value minus 303 kilojoule per mole and removal of this restriction was proposed by Hitler and London and in this case, this energy was proposed exchange energy. But they do not agree with the point that only removing one restriction, we are getting this much of low energy. So, they given another explanation for having this low energy that when the hydrogen atoms overlap with each other to form a molecule, the distance increases for the electrons to move, right? And according to the Schrodinger wave equation, E is equal to n square h square upon 8 ml square. So, energy is inversely proportional to the length. After overlapping, the length of the box increases. Therefore, there is improvement in the energy value. Now, coming to the next point. Now, the next restriction which they considered for the approximation of the wave functions is the effective nuclear charge. On effective nuclear charge, I have already made a video, but again, I am going to explain here just for your understanding. So, here I am going to show you what is this effective nuclear charge. Suppose we are having nucleus, where this is the nucleus and this is the electron. We are having shells, right? This is the Bohr atomic model. So, if electron electrons which are inside this they shield the nucleus and the electron will not experience the actual nuclear charge which is present in the nucleus so there is a shielding constant so on this electron will experience the g effective which is equal to the, the actual nuclear charge or atomic number minus the shielding constant here sigma is the shielding constant because of this mutual repulsion these electrons in the valence shell will not experience the same nuclear charge 
as they should however they experience a lesser nuclear charge which is termed as effective nuclear charge so if we adjust wave functions to account the shielding from the second electron then the energy value is further improved so what is that this is like this here the shape of these are not perfect so it would be better if you follow these from some textbooks right the energy is about minus 365 kilojoules per mole right so we improved on considering this effective nuclear charge in the wave functions the next approximation is what we have done earlier we have done that the electrons are like this they are at this moment and this is the internuclear distance so we are saying that they exchange each other and we artificially think that because of the repulsion one nuclei will have one electron at a time but there may be a condition for a moment that both the electrons may stay at one electron either this or this so this is could be possible suppose we are having two objects right and they are having two pencils so they are exchanging their pencils so this gives and this takes but this situation can also be possible that this hold both the pencils at a moment and then give the another one to this one right this is my understanding maybe you may have better understanding with the subject so this type of situation can also arise so if they are exchanging one by one then we are having a bond which is termed as covalent bond but if the situation is like this that one is having both the electrons at one moment and the other one is empty so in that case this will have negative charge and this will have positive charge so h plus and h minus type of situation is here similarly this case can also occur when both the pencils or both the electrons are with the object a or hydrogen atom respectively so here we are having a situation h minus and h plus and these two terms contributes towards the ionic bond of hydrogen atom and this is the covalent bond here this is the covalent bond if we consider this then the wave function can be written as so just for your better understanding i remove it so here psi a1 psi b2 psi a2 psi b1 this is what we considered in our previous slide so this is the contribution towards the covalent bond but if the case is this then we consider a constant lambda its contribution and psi a1 psi a2 both the electrons are present on a so this is representing this type of situation both the electrons with a hydrogen atom and the other one is empty and here this represents the this case when both the electrons are present on b psi b1 psi b2 so here is the psi covalent overall and this lambda h plus h minus lambda psi h minus h plus what is this lambda lambda is considered as because this is very less probable because of the repulsion of the electrons then this covalent bond therefore this lambda is considered or the contribution of these wave functions is very less than 1 and the energy value on considering this ionic contribution is minus 388 kilojoules per mole and the bond distance is 74.9 picometer we get the value for this and a graph is like this and the actual graph is like this here one thing which i bring to your notice that both when they are interacting they are overlapping we are considering the situation like they are paired electrons are paired if electrons are not paired in that case we are getting a graph like this this so no bond formation is there and this is uh, this occurs when both the electrons are not paired they are in parallel direction so i hope you understand this concept the approach 